uh, it's like when my brother died. I don't want, okay, what the ego also wants is for everyone to do what they should do in order to get the best outcome. They, everybody wants the person to not do that because they'll miss them. It's, it's, when he died, I just thought, hey, I'll catch you, I'll catch you around. It's not a big deal, not a problem. Even my dad just recently passed about four months right. ago. Yeah, and I've already kind of spoken to him. So it's, it's just not an issue. I don't really, we're eternal. You can't die. It's, it's everybody just, let's just come to that. You can't die. It's not possible. There's no such thing as death. It's an illusion. I am Jason Abraham, the Shadow Teacher 33, professional wellness and sovereignty coach, practical mystic, and warrior of truth in the grand illusion. I'm honored to share a revelation conversation with writer, philosopher, researcher, master of the ancient sciences and lost wisdom, keeper of the great arcanum, Jonathan Johnson of Arc Source One. Jason, thanks, man. It's nice to be here. It is nice to be here as well. An honor every time to every do this. Every time. It's been incredible. So, there's been talks of expansive awakenings. There's talk back in 2012 of a consciousness awakening, a great awakening, a spiritual awakening. And in 2020, there mm -hmm. was also talk of a great spiritual awakening. The great awakening, if you will. Jonathan, I was curious what your thoughts are on this concept of awakening. For me, the Great Awakening is, looks an awful lot more like the end than, than anything else. You start, you start at the beginning, and as you progress through the creation, you go in, you experience it, multiple lives, and then as everything kind of culminates and comes to a, to a close, there's a transition from the way things have been done uh, the scale of the creation has a particular path, vibration, or um, resonance. So at the end, the resonance goes from what it was, and it shifts the new harmonic into a new frequency. Um, and, and with this one, actually, it, uh, the way I always felt about it is it's, it's like the, the, the hoop that goes full circle. And when the beginning and the end come into contact, once the where you started from and where you end, touch, where they meet, the, the frequency spectrum that you, you were just living through, it, it is annihilated. And then out of that is birthed an eternal uh, awakening. So for me, the awakening is simply just me going home. Um, I suppose others are viewing it as a 5D shift. Others are viewing it as a the age of Aquarius type of mentality around it. But for me, it's, it's just a kind of a going home back to the place where, uh, and I suppose I might have to stay here a little while just for the, the initial shift and turnaround. But after that, I'm going to go home. So for me, it's, it's a homecoming. It's, it's not, I, I don't look at it as going from the third dimension density to fourth and fifth, like a lot of the, the new age community is doing. For me, it's, I started at, in this one, I think I started at 13 and then descended down all the way through the frequencies through time. And now we arrive here, we're at the end. I think I spoke about this in my video. We're at the end where the culmination, everything kind of, the entropy takes over and there's a collapse. And so for me, it's, it's a little bit the other way around. To me, the, the, the destructive end or the, the, the creation coming to a close is a doorway that then leads you into eternal life. So my perspective is bound to be quite a lot different than some. I think some other people do have that same perspective. But for me, it's uh, going from the illusory, like we speak about the matrix sometimes, you know, the illusion of all this. To me, when you step through the doorway, once you 
once you go through the first death, which is what a lot of people are going through right now with their egos, their sense of security, sense of self, you just lost your job, you know, your, the, your whole world gets shaken up. That's the, that's kind of the, towards the end of a hero's journey where your whole world just gets, for lack of a better way of putting it, it just gets kind of seemingly ripped apart. There's no, you can't keep it in control. You can't get it to go the way you want it to go. But there comes a point where you just let go and surrender. And it's just this, ah, it's a free fall. And that right there is the first death. And then the first death leads you to the second death, which is when you really do die out of this physical form. But if you, if you, if you can overcome the first death, the second death has no power over you, is a reference in saying, once you let everything go and know that you have no control over any of this, then the ego says, fine, okay, I give up. And it, it basically surrenders the fight and stops trying to control the ship. Then the divine says, see, I was taking you there the whole time. You just were fighting with me. You were resisting. And then once it dies and goes to the second death and you actually do physically die, you won't be all that concerned or bothered by that death because you've already, um, you've already dealt with it. You've already felt what it would feel like to lose loved ones, uh, your sanity, your finances, you know, all kinds of things, relationships. And then when you die the second time, you're free. It's, it's, to me, it's like, a, it's like a doorway to the eternal because that's uh, how, how it actually works. The process, when it unfolds and ends, there's a death and a finality. And that, that comes back again to with Arman. He, he has a purpose. It's not, he's not just some anomaly. His, his purpose is to close it out, bring it down. It's just not too much because destruction has a tendency to over, overdo it. It, it. It's all about annihilation. So if you, you can stop it before it's too late, clear that energy out, and then rebuild and start over fresh. So these people will have a new... In my video I speak, the people of this world will have a new age of grace, which is what's coming, which is a lot of... I think a lot of these people that are referring to the fifth dimensional shift is what they're talking about. Um, that's not what it is, but... It's akin to that. It's when the golden age restarts and everything's new again. So it'll swing back up the other way. So one of the challenges, again, when we're talking about some of these esoteric ideas, talking about concepts of frequency and vibration, concepts that go beyond the five senses that most people are familiar with in the matrix. And you just spoke of this. Uh, in the 3D perception, you're, you're, you're saying that awakening is actually going to look like chaos and destruction and death and these feelings that are really unpleasant for the human being. Mm -hmm. So you're like the, the chaos that's happening on a mass scale is actually the catalyst for awakening. This is providing the catalyst for these circumstances that the ego just has to give up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to realize no matter what you do, you can't stop this. Mm -hmm. And the only choice then is to surrender, essentially, the, yeah. that being the ego death. Yeah, the ego, uh, the frontal part of the brain is... It, 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 um, The part of the brain that governs, I have control, or I can... It, it controls the wellness of the body, of the self, of the being. That's what its job is. It's, it has to be there, or else uh, none of this would have worked. So it has to, though, eventually let go. So the ego, everybody wants to think, okay, i got to make a certain amount of money every month. I've got I've to protect my family. I've got to protect my kids. But inevitably, no matter how much planning or how much... Uh, control someone thinks they have, things still happen. People still die. Um, people still lose their jobs, lose relationships. So the ego death or the, the end of the hero's journey is the part where you get destroyed. You get, it's the alchemy. You take, you take the material that was, you break it down. That's what alchemy is. You break down the old. You destroy the old. 
Then with the ingredients, you make something new and then you create a new. And that's the rebirth or the resurrection. That's where the hero goes from his dark night of the soul. He goes through the bottom, which is the underworld. And as he starts to reascend, he has to be annihilated at the bottom. He has to, he has to have a complete destruction of all that he is. And that's, I think we touched on that last video about people watching this video won't understand a lot because they'll get triggered by certain things. That is because their ego wants to be right, wants to control, or wants to make sure that that thing that I'm seeing is pushed as far away from me as I can get. Wants to be validated. Right. They want that perspective they're familiar with to be validated by right. what we're presenting to them. Yeah. And when we challenge that, they don't like that. The ego yeah. does not like it. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a, you can't control that. And that's why people are a little bit having a hard time with the transition right now because all of the things that we're disclosing as, as a team, all, all the people that are doing all the hard work to, to share with the revelations that they have about, you know, whether it's the government or, you know, the, the things are getting in the shoulder and all that different stuff, that stuff is all being shared and open, but only certain kind of people are seekers. Certain kind of people are cut out to really drop their preconceived notions. I think you mentioned that just the other day. You have to just forget all the things that you know. All the things you think you know. Think you know. Yeah. And, and you have to just say, okay, I don't want to know what I think or what I believe or what is right or wrong. I want to see it. Just let me see it for, for what it is without any biases, prejudices, or um, conjurings of what I would like it to be. And then the truth can really present itself. But most people get triggered by the truth because it, it's usually not the same as what they've been told. So it's pretty triggering. Well, I'm also looking at this. A mass awakening essentially is being triggered through these systems that people have surrendered their authority to, unconsciousness. This is inadvertently actually triggering like a massive awakening that otherwise would have simply happened on smaller individual levels. But this is the collective awakening from, from my perspective that I'm seeing. And again, it looks something that's very scary, but the, the choice for those who believe in free will is that you can either fight and fight and fight and try to grab on, do your best to try to control something that you can't, or you can let go. Yeah. And which, which is what we're talking about. So the other side of that, with awakenings, I've found throughout my life, I've not just had one awakening, there's been several. There have been several experiences I've had where my concepts of what I thought I know or do or who I thought I was were destroyed. They were annihilated. Yeah. And then something else came through and then that process would happen again. And that was my individual journey. And I believe my individual journey brought me to where I've made some of the choices that I've made this day, which have led me to where I am, the beliefs that I hold mm -hmm. right now. What's your experience been like on an individual basis for this concept of awakening, this death and rebirth? Uh, mine's Mine's been very, to me, mine's been so thorough that I, if, if I've missed anything, I, I think I, it would be a miracle because I got destroyed so completely. And still, even today, the, the, the pressure and the alchemy, it's an every day, every minute, every second kind of thing. We were talking about and that today before we, we started to turn these cameras on. Yeah, you asked me how I was feeling and I said, well, I'm pretty traumatized, pretty, what would I say, exhausted. Uh, yeah, the battle out. between you and, and, and he. Who, yeah, because we'll, 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 he comes up at every video. Because, every dang time. <laughs> because he's relevant right now. Right. This, this, well, this, and that's, that's the awakening is, is uh, he has a purpose. His purpose is, is to, he's the destroyer. He destroys it at the end. That's how it goes. That's, uh, you create it in the beginning, you pervade it in the middle, preserve it, and then you let it be destroyed. Um, <clears throat> the level of awareness so, is what matters. I, I want to get more personal. I want to get okay. more of Jonathan Johnson, though. I want to. I want to get more about what these awakenings look like, or 
you know, you, you talked about this in your breath work, and that was the discovery of the breath work practice was it was an awakening practice for you. What was what were do you mind sharing what some of the life circumstances were? What 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 are some of these three D circumstances that you were going through that put you in that space on a personal level? What way? Like, um, that's what I want to know you. I want these people who are watching this to know you. Okay. To, to, to know you on a human level, not just okay. on. Not not just the mission from beyond, but the human level, the, the man who is the conduit for everything and, and that experience. I okay. believe that's relevant and valuable. Well, for me, it started out exactly the same way as everybody else. Uh, I remember when I was a little kid, I, when I was little, in, in, a, in the first or second video, we talked about me being awake here, and like I was awake all the time. But I didn't have the facts. Just because you're awake doesn't mean you know what's feeling. going on. Yeah, just the feeling. Yeah, just like in the Matrix, when when Morpheus says there's a feeling that something is is wrong. Wrong. Yeah, you can feel it. And so when I was little, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know my job or anything. I didn't know where I had come from. It was a feeling, and I couldn't shake the loneliness of missing home. I couldn't shake. I, for some reason, I always speak to father and mother. But I could never shake that, oh, God, I want to go home so bad. I, I miss my mother. I miss my father. I miss home. It was like I always, when I was a kid, I always felt like I was a stranger in a strange land. I always felt like I was a, abandoned here in this place. I don't even know where it is. Would you say that your, your earthly father and mother, did you, would, are you saying that that didn't feel like a father and mother in the home that you were raised in? Or... Um, how, how would you, what, you describe that the, human earthly connection? Um, I was a very sensitive child. I'm a Pisces, uh, cusp Aquarius, so I'm super sensitive. I feel the whole world and everything in it. And but in that light, I didn't really, I didn't feel safe most of the time here in this world because I knew what was what was going on um, with my mother and my father, biological parents. Um, they were incredible examples. And so they, they did a very good job of mirroring my heavenly father and heavenly mother. Um, only difference being that uh, my mother's quite young. She's like an infant in, in spiritual terms. She's quite a young, young soul. And she had never, as far as I can tell, she'd never had children. So, so and she had 12 kids and adopted four. And then she, they fostered Upwards of 50 to 60. Wow. I, wow. I don't know the number. That's quite a family. That's a huge family. Yeah, so we were always giving people love, places to, to live and to, to be taken care of. And we helped, uh, my dad would always help whoever was homeless or um, pick up hitchhikers and stuff or help re rehabilitate uh, addicts or alcoholics. So I got to see everything, but it also destabilized me a bit at a young age because I was so sensitive, I could feel everything those people were bringing in my house. And so I felt very unsafe right out of the gate because my mom, when I was born, she had already had nine kids plus the adopted four. So I was number 10. And so that, that line of upbringing, it, it made me withdraw within, which turned out to be very helpful in the later stages because... I became very self-reliant, probably to my detriment, um, that I can self, I'm self-motivating, I'm self-aligning, I'm self-orientating. But, but I do tend to di uh, end up distancing myself from loved ones and from, um, and family is the hardest thing for me because when I was in my original family with my brothers and sisters and stuff, it was traumatizing, so I always was withdrawn. Tra traumatizing... So you spoke of of some of that. So when, when your your father would would foster people who were dealing with the demons of addiction, and you'd pick up on that, just your natural gifts and your natural inclinations, you would feel that, and you'd kind of would, would you say you would take on some of that energy, or or was it, would you feel that just energy wanting to pierce into your soul? Um, no, I was always heavily protected. I still am. The fact that I'm not dead is at least five to seven times over. So you didn't feel threatened by it, but you no. felt it at the same time. I There were some instances where I took matters into my own hands. Um, 
uh, because I, I, I will withdraw, but if I'm pushed too far, I can definitely <laughs> um, take care of my own space. Um, but in the sense of their stuff coming at me, no, I was, spiritually, I've always been really protected. If I ever die, it's because it needs to happen. And it does for everybody. We all only die when we need to die. But what I'm saying is, is I don't, uh, I knew I was always taken care of. I have a pretty hefty crew that protects me, especially in this life, because the stakes and how... how well, where was this trauma that you felt threatened by? Where was that coming from? Just the constant having to transmute. So I feel anything anyone feels. So anyone that's in my vicinity, I can feel you. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're up to. So when people were not were up to no good, I could tell and I could feel it. And I didn't have a filter and also didn't have a way of understanding it. So I was I was very much just a, a transmuter. And that's what I still am. I still transmute. So maybe some of these people who had str struggling who were struggling with addiction, the intentions when they had maybe bad intentions, is that what you were feeling? Like yeah, intentions I, to exploit your father or, or your family? Mm -hmm. and, you'd feel, and that was what you are picking up on? Yeah, my upbringing, I, I just went over it just a few days or a week ago with my wife, and I was a bit shocked because it all came up to the surface that day, that, that week, about all the traumas I've endured. Um, I mean, it's like just being constantly... Just, it's like Navy SEAL training. It's like, okay, we're going to take you down again, and then we're going to see if you can handle it, and then we'll take you down further, see if you can handle more. And it was like that. I, uh, my, my, one of my brothers um, committed suicide when he was only, it was actually my 18th birthday. So on, on my 18th birthday, that very night, after I just spent several hours laughing, joking with him in his room, uh, that later that evening, he went and and I already knew he would because I'd heard him talk about it several times. And But with me, that kind of stuff didn't bother me as much as most people because I already knew he was going to and I knew it was part of his plan and part of the divine plan. And so it was fine. It's fine, but it still affected me quite profoundly. I woke up the next morning and we all found a letter. And so it was... Uh, it was and then, then I remember the next day or two, I heard... I was... I don't know what I was doing, but I was... Oh, I was walking. I walked over to the site where it occurred and I was looking at the, the blood on the, the ground and the hole in the, in the rafters where the bullet went in and then I heard the pop in my, in my mouth and then I smelled gunpowder go up my nose. And it was so loud that my ears were ringing and I couldn't hear anything. And, but that was normal for me. I could I'd just feel what they were doing and what, what they were going through. And, and same with another brother. Um, one of my brothers had brought a motorcycle home and, uh, very fast motorcycle. I, I took it just before my other brother did. I took it, I was doing about 130 miles an hour flat out down the highway, came back, parked the bike, and then he came over and he was kind of, he was kind of drunk, intoxicated. And, and we're like, no, you can't ride it. And he said, he was very matter of fact and very assertive. He said, no, I'm riding it. And he just took it from us and took off. The minute he let, the minute he got on that bike and left, I turned to my then girlfriend and I said he's gone we'll never see him again and then I walked over to the restaurant and we ate and I was sitting there eating and I already knew it was done and happening and and then my sister-in-law come walking into the restaurant she had this her face was just white like a, like she'd seen a ghost and she said um I don't know how to tell you this and I said I already know and she got really shocked it shook her she went ha huh? how did you know how would you know that I said yeah he's dead isn't he and she said yeah, he just wrecked on his motorcycle, and he's comatose. And I was like, yeah, I already knew. I knew the minute he, he rode away. Um, and then when I was, uh, when the, first, the first time I was going to have children, it uh, was unexpected, but it was, we were trying to prepare. And but then in the middle of the night, it was, uh, she went into labor, and it was way too early. It was, what was it, a month early? Or, I don't remember, maybe it was a month and a half or more. Anyway, she was in the third, not even in the third trimester quite yet. And uh, we got to the hospital and she was already well underway and the babies were two twins. They were, one was anterior, one was posterior breech. And the first one came out, and uh, but it was coming, it was coming, and then as soon as it got um, to the head, it got stuck, the neck got stuck in the uh, cervix. and. I remember, because he was just a little guy, he was only like a foot long, 
he was still kind of the purple color because he hadn't his his skin hadn't turned the pigmentation yet and I remember just seeing him there kicking. He was kicking, trying to get free, but he couldn't get free. He couldn't get his head out. And the doctor was frantically trying to get him out, but couldn't get him out. And um, so he said, I have to cut your cervix. I'm sorry. I, are you ready? I have to do this to save you and the baby or try to salvage the situation. So he reached up in there and he slit the cervix just right in half with a um, scalpel. And I'd never heard anybody scream like that before, except for in the movies, perhaps. And, uh, and then he proceeded to still try to get the baby out. And he ended up touring, tearing the whole shoulder and neck. It started coming apart because he was pulling so hard. And then, needless to say, after that one cleared out, the next one was already gone. So I'm no stranger to severe trauma. I, I don't... Uh, I, I've, <laughs> I've paid with, with everything imaginable. Uh, not to mention other past lives, but we won't get into that till that's time. But Right, this is, but yeah, that, that's, and that's quite a bit of heavy trauma to be part of. Yeah. But it's, it, the thing is, and it's like we were talking before, the divine knows what it's doing. Um, everything that I've gone through and everything you've gone through, any, everything that people go through in their life path is the teacher. That's why you don't need gurus. Your life knows exactly what you need, and it knows exactly how to give it to you. The trick is, it's not fighting it tooth and nail with your ego. So when my brother killed himself, it was like, all right, I will see you soon. And I did. I talked to him not more than a year later. I went, I went to the, the, the realm that he was in. I came landing in on the hill, and it was just beautiful. I looked to my left, and there was this gigantic, craggy, rocky mountain that was just glistening with spiritual light and the grass was just lush and beautiful i went down and i i began shouting his name because i was i was i was uh, looking for him and if i shouted his name it would call me to him and so i walked down there was a like a, a ghetto or a slum and there were all these buildings that were down in the valley that had tin and like paneling and plywood and screen and so i went down in there and i went to the door i knocked on the door and he opened the door and he looked like he looked the same, but he looked like he had been washed with water. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I said, how are you? Are you doing okay? I just came, stopped by to make sure you're okay. And he said, yeah, I did realize, though, that there's no way around it. You can't, you can't get out. There's no cheating the, the course, the system. I said, no, you can't. You have to. It's, it's, the only way out is through. And so he, uh, he said, yeah, I know. I get that now. I said, well, as long as you're good and taken care of, we'll, uh, I'll catch up with you. So you were 19 years old at this point? That was probably in, I was probably 23 or so. so a few years older. Yeah, it was a little later. So I, I checked this, on to, to go into the spirit realm, is that something that, did you learn that from your dad? Or is that just something that, that, that found its way, did spirit just guide you into that? Um, that's, see, that's why in some respects I always feel quite lonely because to me this stuff is normal like I see I've seen mother and father's face most people talk about I saw the face of God and I'm thinking uh yeah I can do that any day I choose if I want to because that's that, it's just normal I don't um I don't have to struggle so, to do that. so you, you, so ever since you can have a memory you believe you, you felt like you you could see the face of God yeah, I didn't. But to, to me, it's, it's a little different. It's like, if you come from there and it's normal to you, you don't, you don't get all worked up about it. But if you're stuck here and you've never seen it for lifetimes upon lifetimes, it gets a little, a little different, I guess. So, again, I'm just trying to get a perspective because I haven't seen that. Okay. I, I have not. I've had my encounters with God and with the divine for sure, but it's never been crystal clear. It's never been vague. Yeah. And every bit of pain and suffering that I've experienced, I've felt. Yeah. And I've been tempted to want to check out and leave. And I felt the pain for others in my life or around me who have lost their lives. And that pain was very real feeling. And so even though I'm a believer in God, when that pain, the, the human experience of feeling 
that intense pain and it ripped me to my core. So when I'm trying to get an idea for you, did, did you have this encounter with God or father, mother? And I want to go into that's probably, I don't know if I want to go into that in this particular conversation. I think that's probably worthy of a conversation all, all to itself. To itself. Okay. okay. That's on my, my list here. Nice. Okay. But was, was that something you, you can always, even before experiencing trauma, did you have that connection? So, yeah. so how did that change? So when you did experience these, these traumas that would just devastate a human with shame, with guilt, with sadness for the loss, like being able to, just the idea of someone who was your brother and who you loved, you're not going to see them in this physical realm anymore. Yeah. How did that, what, what's different for you in that experience? Or, or was it not? Uh, the, the simplest way to put it is I just know, uh, it's like, it, it's like if you have a, like if I asked you to reprogram a computer, you'd probably just go, huh? I, I don't know how to write code. I have no idea. I might, you might want to just hire a code writer or a computer whiz because I don't know, I don't know how that happens or how, how to do that. For me, it's like that. So me here is, um, I'm not uh, lost. I'm not confused. I'm not in any danger. As a matter of fact, with what's coming, the awakening you mentioned, we're all in, whoever's, whoever can hear what I'm saying, whoever can really get what I'm are trying my best to articulate, will will well, will not worry about. I that. wasn't asking about danger or threat. I was asking uh, more about loss. Here. Well, what I'm getting at yeah. is, is I don't, I don't, uh, I have a, I don't know. I have an ability to. To know that the divine knows what it's doing, and so I trust. To trust, it's a. Some people need faith because they don't know that it's real. I don't need faith. I need trust because trust is. Like that's usually what mother or father says to me. You know, like in the Garden of Gethsemane, just said, trust. I know. I know. I, I can feel every square inch of you, son. I, I'll feel every bit, every lash that you feel. I will feel, and I will cry too because they're not just like omnipotent removed beings they know exactly what you're going through everything that you feel they feel so they feel it but they say just trust and so i don't need faith blind faith or any of that i just need to trust the process and surrender and that goes back to what you were saying about the ego death and letting go and the free fall and trusting is i know that this thing is perfect the pain the death the trauma and the whole thing. It's all culminating to a complete perfect crescendo that will leave you standing in your eternal state at the end. It's just you don't know. I, what I've noticed is people say, yeah, if I was perfect, I'd do it right. And I'm thinking, no, you are perfect. You're exactly perfect the way you're supposed to be. So when you arrive to where all of this will culminate to, you'll see it crystal clear. You won't be confused anymore. And that's where I'm coming from. So when someone dies, I don't, well, I just try to reconnect. That's all. What would you say, what's the purpose of this level of suffering, a suffering that someone feels so intense that they'd be willing to take their own life? Uh, that's just, uh, what I've noticed, that's just uh, a lot of trauma and a lot of lives, or both, and not having, not having skills, tools to, to deal with it. That's why the breath work saved my butt. It still saves my butt every day, because it okay. gives me a way so, so let's go to your breath work. Let's go, go back. This is going back to awakening. Yeah. So it sounds like you already had this awareness, but you obviously, again, had to go through some suffering as well. There had to be suffering within you for you to find the breath work, for you to find the breath. Oh, I see what you're trying which, to get which at. Which you okay. said in the first video. Yeah. In your own words, you admitted that you were in such a low place. You talked about listening to Les Brown and motivational speakers while, while doing the breath work. What, I want to go there. What were you going through at that point? Or what, were, what was the root of the suffering? Or what did the suffering look like in your life 
that was taking you to that place to where you, you felt compelled to listen to motivational speakers mm-hmm. and you had to reach into this practice that was deep within your memory, maybe from a past life. So you want to know the things that... Yeah, I want to to know Jonathan Johnson. Okay. Well, it was a long series. uh, As I grew up, the traumas were just kind of buried in the closet, in the back of my brain. And you said you did the breath work. Was it five years of of breathing every day? Yeah, it was pretty... And, I, I, and let's let's look at a time frame. What what time in your life is this? How old are you? At this uh, point? That was only since I've been here, which has only been I'm not going on seven and, years and here. I'm asking you this because I want people to see a human quality here. Most people yeah. can't relate to a lot of this 5D or yeah. this esoteric stuff. Whether you believe it or I believe it, to me, to be effective, we've got to connect on a human level. So. Well, that's what I want to get at with you. So go, so go in and tell your story. So I would, uh, the stuff that was the trauma was all just kind of buried in the back, and I was just living like most people do. You just live and get on with stuff. You don't know why you freaked out. You don't know why you're crying. You you really don't know all the the ins and outs. Um, and then there was there were some instances um, that. Uh, One of the hardest ones for me has been my children um, because some of the children I I had agreed to bring in but not raise. And so there was a lot of pain that came with that. There was a lot of trauma that came with just the way I was raised and all the incidents that I had mentioned. So eventually I just got to the point where all trauma, you can't outrun trauma. You just can't. So the longer you try to put it off, the worse it will tear you apart. And that's where people usually end up in the suicidal territory is, I just can't do it anymore. And and, and the demons, what people call our demons, is they, they are real, but they're also just your own creation. So if you've been traumatized, then you keep recreating that energy field that then follows you everywhere you go. Right. And it takes chunks out of you. And it'll tear you apart eventually. It tries to bring you to your knees. That's Aramon's territory. We won't go there, but the whole point is, is that's where I was at. I couldn't do it anymore. And I, I, to be honest with you, if I'm completely honest, I've wanted to get out of this place since I got in it, um, even from the very beginning, but especially this life. But it was just a series of events of all those things piling up and piling up and piling up. And I just, what I shared with the, with everyone, the first video about being on the floor here, and I was just annihilated. I couldn't do anything. I wanted to die so bad. I wanted out. But I had to make a decision whether I was going to stay or whether I was going to go. And I made the decision to stay. And then that required me to defeat my demons. It's like, it's like if you're standing around and you haven't pulled your sword out. And I finally made that decision. I finally said, all right, I'm not a victim. I'm not a, I'm not going to sit here and complain and whine. I'm a hero and I'm going to get up on my father's son and I'm going to do something about it. So I just switched my switch from being a victim and it's all on me versus no I'm proactive this will only make me stronger so I just shifted into that and I had to because and to be even more direct what started to happen is as I was growing up I started having memories and flashbacks Uh, sometimes I would just be sitting there and I'd just start having a flashback of Jerusalem or or uh, uh, there was actually a couple in Jerusalem or I'd have one in Scotland or and I would just have to kind of brace myself because I was, my whole body was feeling it and going through it again. I don't know if you're familiar with veterans, but you just have, it's just, you're checked out and you, you kind of have to grab something or be, to take some Disassociated, yeah. So yeah. You're, you're kind of having something that's pulling you out of your body, yeah. So not only did I have all the trauma from when I was little, but then I also had the trauma from past lives that I hadn't had a chance in the past life because it was too much work. To deal with, so uh, I, I remember. Did, did you understand that was this whole past life thing? Did you understand that was what was going on, or was it the breathing that brought you into the clarity to where you could actually get more of a concept of that being what was causing these visions you were having? No, I knew right away. I I was very well aware of my past. I I had. It's like if you wake up in the morning, you still know you're Jason, right? 
that's how it is for me every time I wake up out of a past life. It's like, yeah, I remember that, but I'm not going to go there. I remember that one. I'm not going to go there. I don't remember them consciously, but back here, they're all very well stored. And so I knew it and I felt it. So when I, and the breath work isn't even what brought up the past lives. I just started having those because I was meditating. And then I started doing hypnosis sessions because of part of my work. I was doing hypnosis. That's when it started coming. The so you, you were doing past life regression hypnotherapy? Like you were yeah. working with someone on that? Yeah. At first I was doing it with, with, a, with a person that would help. Then I went to, uh, I was with professionals as well. And sometimes it would just give me a quick shot so I could, just so I could put it in the slot for next time when I could deal with it. Other times it was full immersion. I, or full immersion. I had, uh, what really pushed me over the edge though was when I started reliving the uh, crucifixion. That was by far the worst. I had two, if not three regressions. I had heart attacks or I was starting to have a heart attack and I had to pull out. I had to pull out twice. Um, one of them, my heart's never been the same since because it hurt so much. It was My heart went like that and it started squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. And then I, I said, okay, I got to let this, I got to go out. And so I let go of the, the regression and I pulled out as best I could. And th that, that one nearly finished me there. Um, and I had three of those. I, had, I, I think on that one, I've had five total, but... Um, for me, it's just to get to the, get underneath and feel, refeel it, um, deal with it, because people talk about it all the time in their stories and their books and their churches, but they don't, they don't have the first clue as to how it felt. So, what do you think the purpose for you in this life is? Uh, uh, this life has been many lives piled up that I didn't get a chance to go through and and heal the trauma out of the soul, out of the, out of the. The basement. If you like. So would you say some of these events in your life, some of these traumas you're feeling, these are like wake-up calls saying, pay attention to this. This is something you need to work on in yourself. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't to remember that a uh, past life, because I don't really care about that stuff. I don't care about any of them, actually. I just, the only reason they come up is, okay, well, heal so you can proceed. Because if you don't heal this right now, you are going to die, and we will lose you in the fight. So just... So Heal you, that. You care about the the healing is what's important. Yeah, the healing's all that matters that, to me. And I will say though, the the remembering my old wisdom gained. Every life you gain something, you learn something, you, you get a you learn a teaching or a or a practice or a healing modality or a or just a karmic lesson. So so learn to to, to get a better grasp on it after you've done it. So from your perspective with something like with past life regression or understanding past life, something that seems so essential to a soul finding its purpose and doing what it came here to do. Why is that something that so few people have a grasp of or even believe in? Yeah, that's an interesting question there because uh, to me it's just common knowledge. I've always known that. Common sense. Uh, so, so, but, what, okay. what, for, so for someone who doesn't believe in that at all. Like I, I was raised Catholic and there is from the modern day church there that would be looked at as, as heresy to yeah, yeah. talk about past well, some lives. Some don't. And, some people don't have past lives so it's not really that I don't really but, either way I mean some of some people are just people um, but still. How, how does that happen? How does someone show up with no no past life. And, well, especially if they've cloned people or they've created any... Well, that's another, that'll be another video yeah. too. But, that's but, a whole other topic. Yeah, but that's but, that's just creating people. They can make them. They make them in the laboratories all the time. It's not nothing new. Again, what I want to get at though, for someone who doesn't believe in this at all, who doesn't have any concept of past life or just brush it aside, Dismiss. who... And I believe there's value to communicating with those people yeah. and, and you know, not just simply coexisting, but having good conversations. I want you to, I, I'm going to be that person right now. It's not necessarily my belief, but I'm going to play that person right now. For my belief system, I'm having it a hard, I'm having a hard time swallowing the past life thing, mm -hmm. but, but I want to, I'm curious. I want to know why you believe in this so strongly. Well, to steal a line out of a movie, I don't remember which movie, I think it's Contact. Um, 
he asked this woman, he says, I don't remember her name. Uh, he says, how do you, why do you believe in God? How can you, I don't understand um, why you would believe in something so silly. And she said, can I ask you a question? He says, yeah, sure. He sa she said, do you love your father? And he said, yeah, I do very much. She said, prove it. So I don't honestly believe there's any way to prove it unless you do past life regression, which is hypnosis. Because it's stored in there, whether you know it or not. Uh, it's just a matter of getting to it. And so if someone came to me, I'd say, well, do breath work and I'll show you. That's what I would do. Because I can pretty much pull anything out of anyone with breath work. I can, if they have demons haunting them, I kick them right out. If they have trauma, if they have past lives that they haven't seen. And I think you even did that when you did your breath work. Sure, you yeah, saw, yeah. But you, you're aware of it, you know. You have a, I'm, I'm aware. Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to bridge this gap for someone who may not be even, like I'm obviously someone who is curious about this and dives all the way in. But so, there are many people who I think are very intelligent people who would be resistant. And yeah. I'm just trying to bridge a place of conversation. And that's, that's well said. Do well, there, there, the, it's the, hard the to breath put. work is, is a practice that you experience. You get you get a visceral taste of something like this, and you you get a sign that there's more to the world than what you currently believe. Yeah, in order to get results, you have to do the things that get them. You can't yeah, just so, you can't just uh, criticize someone's practice, process, or beliefs unless you yourself have gotten in and done it. If you mm -hmm. don't. If you haven't done breathwork, don't run your mouth to me about how it does or doesn't work. Because I'll prove you otherwise. You lay on the floor and I'll, I'll guide you through it safe and sound and you'll see things you wouldn't even believe. Yeah. I could take a Catholic and totally ruin their whole world. Because they're thinking the world's a certain way based on what the church told them. One, two breath works, and that whole thing is going to come crumbling down if that's what they want to see. I can sure. I can direct the energy however they like. I don't and, do nothing personal. And to be to me. clear, breath work is it's not the only path. No, it's not absolutely it, but not. It, it's it's your personal path, but there are other people have found it with with plant medicines. Yes. And again, for me, sometimes I w I would just have yes. I would I would have a, a spirit talk yeah. to me, and uh, again. UFO mm -hmm. contact, there's been that. It's been one of my experiences, mm -hmm. something I didn't necessarily, well, I guess I did ask for it, but that's, yeah. a, that's a story for another day, which people who watch my, yeah. my Shadow Teacher channel, I talk about that. Yeah. Um, but so essentially someone, they, they really would need an awakening, kind of going back to the awakening, they would need an awakening experience, an experience that shatters their paradigm of mm -hmm. what is that their ego wants to accept is what is. Yeah, you just uh, have to open your mind. I mean, if and you're for not you, open, it's just you know, you're just being yourself. You know, like yeah, this I whole mean, thing, you're just being you. And if, if you're encountering someone who's resisting that, there's just I guess maybe there's an impasse unless yeah. that person's willing to go into a paradigm shattering experience and then have a conversation. Yeah, and a lot of times people are just contradicting you or opposing you because they want to be... Have, have you ever met someone who has had an awakening experience but didn't believe in past lives? Yeah. Um, the thing I find is it's so seamless and so natural when it occurs that they kind of... They, they're, they're more surprised about the clarity and the detail than they are about, oh, there's such thing as past lives. It's usually more like, wow... Then now this makes sense. Uh, I do have a client who, who come came in as a very powerful, open-minded yet opinionated breather, uh, breath worker, and come to find out that it was all true. So yeah, I've had I've had people just get up after the breath work and just stare because they can't figure out how that just happened. It shakes them to their very core, and that's all I would ever ask. Someone said that to me. I'd just say, "Hey, I'll pay you to do the breath work. How about that?" And then mm -hmm. let's let's take an evening and let's see what you've got in there. Let's see what you're you're all about. And if if you see a past life, we'll both know it. I'll know it before you do. So as you go, let's see what you discover. And I I find that they are quite astonished. I have one person 
I have one person in particular that believes in, it's like they don't buy into the religious, but they do believe that there's something there. They believe there's something to all this, so they want to find out. They don't want to be led down the primrose path like a sheep. They, they want right. to... They want to know real for here for 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 who they really are and inside themselves. They, they want to experience that as for real. To, again, that's the difference. The whole guru dynamic is you're just blindly taking someone's word versus right. having that experience for yourself, taking a perspective or someone who has a practice or whatever and you learn yeah. the practice and then you you experience it for yourself and you come to your own conclusion. Yeah, that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is not you can't give anybody wisdom. Only thing you can do is give them the knowledge, or the wisdom that you gave in a knowledge format, so that they can then apply it and see if it works. So if someone said, "I don't believe in past lives," I'd say, "That's fine. Uh, you want to do a breath work? That's how you'll know. Or uh, we can do a hypnosis. Or we can. There's a lot of ways to do to bring that stuff up. You up for it? Or or you can even just challenge them and say, "Hey, let's see if you can uh, not see what's really in there, because it, it usually comes up." I Seems like every breathwork comes up with somebody's past lives, but and every past life we've ever had come up in a breathwork, not once has anyone ever said you're full of it or you're lying or you made that up, not once. Because there's there's nothing to make up. Either it's there or it's not. Right. It, there's it doesn't even. And I, I can testify to that. Like there's usually something that feels familiar enough about that that it's. It's coming out, but and that's where all traumas, all or, or all let me things let me challenge from. that a little bit. Is that could it possibly be the person is just in a very suggestive state after uh, after a breath work session after having uh, their their cells transmuted at that point? Um, you can't get water out of, out of a pitcher if you didn't put water in the pitcher. So if someone doesn't have an imprint of a past life in there, in the cell memory, you can't get it back out. So you can't fabricate something that's not there to begin with unless they had the experience. So either they did or they didn't. So, you know, it's just how you know, imprinting works, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm just, just yeah, play, yeah. playing Aramon's advocate <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, I like playing Aramon's advocate from time to time. But... No, I could testify, cause I, like some of these breathwork sessions, I would hear when someone would let you see, and you would get the themes. Like they, they would say something, but it wouldn't be exactly your words, but the theme was, was pretty much dead on. So there, there's something. Yeah, and I can usually, usually tell if they've already seen it, and I don't need to bother. It's usually. And, and I'm not here to sell people on believing in past lives or any of this. I just think it's an interesting discussion. I think what's important is having these discussions and for people, for viewers, to find the truth for themselves. Don't take our word for it. We're just people who are having our experience and we're sharing that, but you got to find out for yourself. Yeah, and that that's the more personal aspect of, you know, you want to know more about my personal life. Uh, with that, with the, the teaching and the guru stuff and the breath work, and uh, it's like when my brother died. I don't want, okay, what the ego also wants is for everyone to do what they should do in order to get the best outcome. They, everybody wants the person to not do that because they'll miss them. It's, it's, when he died, I just thought, hey, I'll catch you, I'll catch you around. It's not a big deal, not a problem. Even my dad just recently passed about four months right. ago. Yeah. And I've already kind of spoken to him. So it's, it's just not an issue. I don't really... We're eternal. You can't die. It's, let's everybody just... Let's just come to that. You can't die. It's not possible. There's no such thing as death. It's an illusion. It's one form shifting into another form. But I can guarantee you, the original thing or person or being is still there. So from my personal perspective, I want... All of the viewers, I want all of the people on my breathwork, in my breathwork practice, all of my friends and my family members, I just want them to do them. That's it. And because the, they, they, them being them and them living their path is the path. See, people think, I'm not doing it right, or I need a shaman, or I need a guru, or I need to go to a course. 
What you need to do is you need to sit down with yourself for long enough to let yourself tell yourself what to do. That's how I did it. The breath work didn't come from me studying or watching YouTube videos. I sat down and I listened to God. God told me. Why? Because it's in here. Father is in here. Mother is in here. You're in here. Everyone is just a part of us. So as far as that personal aspect, I want people to just simply live themselves. They are their own guru. And I've always... Well, and I'll offer this. I, I believe there is value to having good teachers. I'm, great. oh, yeah, yeah. I'm no, grateful but... for my mentors. But the way I look at it is we're drawn to the mentors. We're drawn to, to the teachers. There's something inside of us that resonates. And when we listen to that and, and those teachers show up when we're ready... We learn from what the teacher gives us, but we have to go back and reflect on it. We have to go back yeah. to ourselves. Yeah. And it's all connected. What's out there and what is in here is connected. But what you're criticizing and what I criticize quite a bit on my channel are people who are always seeking, like looking at YouTube videos, always incessantly putting more information in, but they're never sitting with it. They're never going in and reflecting and processing. So the information never translates to wisdom. It's just yeah. a bunch of clutter, which causes more confusion and waste of energy. Essentially. Yeah, I, I, I try not to open my mouth unless someone asks me, really, honestly. And sometimes I'll even make a mask a few times, just so I'm certain that they're sincere and they really, really want it. Um, some of the greatest teachers actually will force you to prove that you're, you're really ready, not, not because they don't want to help you, it's because they want you to know for yourself that you're really ready. Because the guru is already like, oh, I can see you're not quite ready, or I can see that you are, but how ready are you? And I think that teaching is a great way, and it's no different than what we're doing here, you know. I don't, I'm not doing this to be on YouTube or on Rumble, or I'm doing it because I've just learned some things and I just would like to share. If it's helped somebody, that's great. If it helps no one, that's fine. Um, but as far as my personal, my motivations is to set the record straight, like I said before. I'm not after the, the viewers and all that. I need them, but I'm not, that's not my driving force. Okay, my so, driving... So, but there you, they're, they're a part of your mission. Yes, yes, very much so. so. so that's... Without them, there's no need to keep... There's, recording there, right <laughs> there we go yeah so. but as far as the the actual motivation it's to get the truth out there so that everybody has the whole puzzle to work with mm -hmm. at least at least the puzzle yeah, I go, go talk. we were matter. talking about this in the car and i do want yeah this is what i want to end on but okay. go on and, and and talk a little bit about the the puzzle and we'll, we'll end there on this one uh, I hear, I watch all the spiritual people, I watch all the channels, you know, most of the major people anyway. I don't know some of the, some of the minor ones, but um, I'm just noticing that there's not a lot of awareness on the full picture. I notice a lot of people are kind of focusing on specific conspiracies and, and themes, you know, if you want to call it that. But no one's taken the whole thing and put it into one cohesive picture. I noticed everybody talking about God as if they're either A, they're completely Christianized about it or, or religious about it, or B, they're, they're turning it into some ethereal... Like new agey type yeah, stuff. Yeah, and that's not... They're both right. It's, you gotta... Yeah. I'm finding that's true with everything, is everybody's thinking it's either out or it's in, or it's both. It's like, they're th like you mentioned about the Christ thing, it's either... It's either in you or it was a real person. There's no in between. No, it was both. Mm -hmm. We're all both. We're all all that. So uh, that was my that's my main hope is just to to, to tie, tie some person. of these loose ends up in a way that that's unique to your perspective. Yeah, and if and, and it, your experience. It, it, yeah, and it, I can remember the beginning. So we'll save that. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna, we're going to stop here because that's a good stopping point. I think you know we've gone really deep and thank you for opening up like really getting vulnerable today and, and sharing some some heavy experiences that uh, be very hard to share on camera for, for many people and I appreciate you opening that up to me and to whoever's watching this yeah it's nice actually to feel uh, encouraged and heard enough to go ahead and share it and that's one of the things about what we're doing here is I wanted to really convey is just 
I'm willing to be completely open and vulnerable and authentic to show that uh, we all have these struggles, that we all, I mean, there's so many people out there with so many things they're working on and trying to get over and heal from. And uh, anything I can do to help, I'm all on board to, to give what I can. But I appreciate you making it uh, yeah. nice and uh, easy in the sense that I can share it, you know, get it out. Yeah, well, we're going to sign off on that note. Sounds good. Well, Jonathan, thank you once again. Thanks, Jason.